Hey there, this video is gonna be an in-depth comparison on the Canon C70 of two fantastic lenses. First of which we have the old faithful, the Sigma Art 18 to 35 F 1.8 and the Canon RF 15 to 35 F 2.8 L lens with stabilization. Now these are both very different lenses and also very similar lenses at the same time. So I wanna go through them in depth and talk about all the differences. First big difference is gotta be the price. The Sigma Art is selling for $700 right now and you'll need the $100 adapter from Canon that goes from EF to RF, of course, because the C70's got the RF mount, which is $100. So this package is $800 if you already don't have the mount, but even so, it's $700 just for the lens. The Canon lens, $2,400. <laughs> it's literally three times the cost of the Sigma lens. So huge difference there. The other difference, and we'll go through a lot of them here, is gonna be the focal length. So this at the wide end is 18, this one on the wide end is 15, and what I wanna do is talk for a moment about apparent focal lengths uh, that you usually do is you multiply the crop factor by the focal length to get what you would assume on a full frame or 35 millimeter sensor. So here are the apparent focal lengths. And for me personally, I generally shoot in UHD more than I shoot in DCI. So for the RF lens, I'm looking about a 23 to a 53, and the Sigma, I'm looking about a 28 to a 53. So to me personally, I really do favor the RF lens because it gives me a couple more millimeters on the wide end, which is really helpful for me. There's also the option of the Canon focal reducer or speed booster, which as you've seen probably in previous videos, I'm not a fan of, and that's why I wanted to compare the Sigma lens. This is also only a crop lens, but we'll get into that more later. Of course, the RF lens has stabilization, and the Sigma lens does not. The apertures are slightly different. So the maximum aperture is gonna be 1.8 on the Sigma lens and the ap maximum aperture is 2.8. So that's a little bit of a difference. You get over a stop of light brighter on the Sigma lens and more control over depth of field. Manual focus is different between these two lenses. So one thing that people really like about the Sigma lens is that it actually has a manual focus throw. So if you're into using manual focus, this one is directly connected. This is a design for using DS on a DSLR camera. This is designed for mirrorless. So this has focus by wire. And some people like that, some people don't like that. So in terms of size, um, the Sigma with the adapter is slightly taller as you can see, but it's also uh, a lot more narrow. But let's talk about the weight too. So weighing these out with both caps on it, this is one pound 15 ounces and the Sigma lens is two pounds, two ounces. So the Sigma lens weighs more. And on top of that, what I find really interesting is just sort of the balance and feel of these lenses on the camera. So I know that the Sigma lens is a little bit longer, but this is a little bit wider. I find that the overall feel of the RF lens on the C70 feels a lot better. It's just more compact. I don't mind the width of it because the camera's pretty wide and chunky because when I put the Sigma lens on here, and this is just personal preference. It's a little more front heavy and has more of a chance of tipping over. So I don't mind the thickness on the RF lens, but again, it's personal preference. We'll get into some tests here. For all the image quality tests, what I did is I shot everything in XF AVC 4K, 10-bit 422 long op, and I shot everything in wide DR. And the reason for that is I didn't want to get in there and start color grading. I usually shoot everything in C-Log2 on the C70, but I didn't want to do that. So all I did was adjust exposure. So let's take a look and, and go through all the things with image quality. Overall, I think they're both very sharp lenses and I don't think you'd be disappointed in either, but I wanna point out some of the differences. And the first one is the distortion or the barrel distortion that you get on the Sigma lens. 
I really don't hear a lot of people talking about this, and I personally noticed this in my office, and I'll show you that in a second, but I noticed it even in the first image in this comparison, when I changed from the Sigma to the Canon lens, you can see the distortion change. And I did have all of the in-camera corrections turned on. So this does have a little bit of barrel distortion, especially at the wide end, something you definitely want to consider. Now I'm over on the C70 with the Sigma 18 to 35, and I want to demonstrate the distortion in another way for you so you can see it. And so this is at the wide end, this is at 18 millimeters. And I noticed this when I was doing talking head setups with this lens in my studio. And what you notice here, if you look at the table, you can see that it looks wider here on the edges than it does in the middle. So you can really see that barrel distortion. And a lot of people won't notice that, but when you're, you're looking at it, you definitely notice, and it looks weird because of course this table is straight. Let me pop on the RF lens so you can see what that looks like. Now we're on the RF lens, and again, this is also at 18 millimeters, and you can see the table looks a little bit better. The other thing I noticed was that the RF lens definitely had more contrast, and as I said, I didn't change the uh, color grading or anything besides the exposure, but on the last image where I had the shot of the log in front of the lake, because I was up at f1.8 versus f2.8 on the you know Sigma and Canon lens, I did adjust a little bit more, and I noticed that even if I after adjust the exposure, there was way less contrast in the Sigma lens, and I did have to adjust that just to make the images look uh, similar. So I'm getting a little more contrast out of the RF lens. In terms of color, as I said, I didn't color grade these, and they're all shot in YDR. The color is different, and take a look at here. I shot this test chart, and what I did here is I did a custom white balance for the Canon lens and then switched over to the Sigma lens and you can see that there is a change in the colors. The Canon tends to lead more um, red and yellow and or warmer and then the Sigma lens tends to lean more towards blue and cyan so it gives them a little more of a cooler look. Again, if you're color grading and doing white, uh, custom white balances, not really that much of an issue, but keep in mind that they are slightly different in terms of their color renditions, especially if you're matching these with other lenses, because if you're shooting on all Canon lenses, then you probably want to shoot on the Canon lens. And if you're shooting on Sigma lenses, of course, this will probably match up a lot better. So if you're, you're using this in, with different cameras, keep that in mind. We'll get into that more a little bit later. Now it's time to test out the autofocus. I'll record the on-screen with the Ninja V, but check this out. There is the tiniest praying mantis hanging out here. How cool is that? All right, so the autofocus I think was pretty similar. I think I would have to give a slight edge to the RF lens in most of the situations that you saw in those tests. I think there was one situation where the Sigma was better, but overall I think the RF was just slightly, uh, slightly snappier, slightly quicker and more accurate. But again, I think the Sigma did pretty well. In all those tests, I did overexpose slightly because I wanted to give them both a fair shot on the C70, which doesn't autofocus very well with backlighting and low lit situations. So that's why it might've looked a little over overexposed. Another thing about autofocus I wanna point out is the noise that these lenses produce when they're focusing. And I'll give you a demonstration in a second, but remember the Sigma came out in 2013 and was designed for DSLR cameras. The RF 15-35 only came out a couple years ago and this was designed for mirrorless cameras. So let's do a little autofocus noise test and show you in the studio here. Now I wanna demonstrate the autofocus noise and for this test here, I have a shotgun mic placed directly on top of the camera to pick up any noise that the lens might be making during autofocus. You might wanna ask why this is important. For some shoots that I do personally, like documentary run and gun style shoots, I often have a shotgun mic mounted on top of my camera and if it's picking up 
autofocus noise from the lens, that can be troublesome. I don't always rely on that audio, but it's something that for some of you in certain situations might be concerned about. So this is the RF lens and let's do a quick autofocus test and you can listen to if you can hear it or not. And here's the Sigma lens. Of course, the RF lens has the upper hand here with stabilization because it has stabilization in the lens, whereas the Sigma does not. Now, the C70 does have an electronic stabilization system, which works really, really well. And once you pair that with a lens like the Sigma, which doesn't have it, it still gives you a pretty steady image. And when I was doing this test, I was just holding the camera against my body and trying to hold it as steady as possible. And I do not have very steady hands. I will always prefer to have lens stabilization over having stabilization in the body because I find it has a more natural stabilization. And when you're doing things like pans or you're moving the camera at all, sometimes electronic stabilization can have little jerky motions and things like that. And also with IBIS, when you have a, um, a physical sensor shift stabilization in the, in the body. But again, the beauty about the C70 is that it does have that electronic stabilization. So if you're looking for a static shot, you, can't, you can get a decent shot with uh, a lens that doesn't have it. But of course, this gives you all of the above and will give you the most stable image. This test was to see if these two lenses were par focal or not. And if you don't know what par focal is, that's when you set focus and you can zoom in or out and it doesn't change the focus on a certain subject. And I thought that the Sigma was par focal, but it clearly wasn't from this test. So you can see that as I zoom in, it loses focus even though I set focus beforehand. And the RF lens did pretty well and I'm surprised. I didn't think it was par focal, but if it's not par focal, it's pretty close. From this test, I think the focus breathing was pretty similar and well controlled on both of these lenses. And if you don't know what focus breathing is, that's when you focus from front to back or from minimum to maximum, and you'll see the focal length change. And you can really take a look in, at the edges of the frame and see if it moves in or out. So really happy with the performance on both of these lenses. Now one of the big question, which lens should you buy? I don't think you're wrong with either lens, so, but let's go through each lens and talk about the pros that they have going for them. We'll start with the Sigma. First of all, the price. You can't overlook the price. This with the adapter is $800. The RF lens is $2,400. It is so much more expensive. The Sigma also has that maximum aperture of f1.8, which is really beneficial in low light and getting a more shallow depth of field if you're looking for that, especially on a super 35 sensor. 1.8 versus 2.8, so that's a big difference. Now, in terms of the RF lens, it has a lot going for it. Of course, I think the autofocus was slightly better. The autofocus noise was silent versus the noise on the Sigma. This lens is par focal or close to par focal. It doesn't have as much distortion. It also has three millimeters wider on the wide end of the zoom range. 
These are all things that are that are important to me. Overall, you know, especially with the image quality being slightly better, I think, not in terms of sharpness, but contrast, as I said, and also distortion and all those other things. This 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 lens is, I think, a little bit more future proof. Also having in the stabilization in the lens is awesome. So basically this lens has everything, but it is definitely more expensive. Um, and the other thing that it doesn't have, I said, is the F1.8. So if that's important to you, then you might want to consider that. Also think about the compatibility with other cameras. So what other cameras do you shoot with or do you own? If you are shooting on crop sensor cameras, like this is only a crop sensor lens, so you have to keep that in mind, this is a full frame lens. If you're shooting on like a C200 or C300 or other crop sensor cameras or Super 35 cameras, the, the Sigma is a great choice for sure. But if your other cameras are gonna be full frame cameras, like for me right now, my other camera is the R5C, this lens is a lot more versatile because I can use it on either camera, which is awesome. I don't have to have different lenses for that. And when you're shooting on multiple cameras on one shoot and you're doing you're mixing footage, I highly recommend that you shoot on the cameras that are the same brand and lenses that are the same brand. As I showed you, the colors are different between the Canon lens and the Sigma lens. So if you are cutting footage between two, the closer you can get to them out of the camera uh, to each other, you'll be much happier. So a lot to consider, but I was really curious how this would do head to head with the RF lens. Uh, I think it did hold its own. I think it's very competitive. And it's no surprise that, was it nine years after this lens came out, it was put out in 2013, it is still a very competitive lens and a lens that's gonna find a home in a lot of people's bags. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please consider hitting subscribe down below. It would be greatly appreciated. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.